Hey guys, Mars Singh here bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And so over the last couple of days, I've seen a lot of people posting LR tier lists, obviously because of the release of LR Bulma. But one thing I always notice, and you guys, if you've watched any of my recent tier lists, you obviously know that I structure my tier lists like this. I don't like to rank units in the game that I have not used myself. So I always do my tier lists as being very global centric. And the thing that I've noticed recently is all of the tier lists that people have been posting over the last few days or since the release of Bulma that are to do with LRs are obviously incorporating all the JP LRs. And if you look at a lot of those lists, at least half of the top 10 <clears throat> for most of these lists include units that are not out on global yet. You've got the 8th anniversary LRs, you've got the easy A's for the 5th anniversary LRs, the Gogeta Blue and Vegito Blue. Uh, you've got the, uh, you can see them at the bottom of the screen here, the AGL Goku from part 2. Uh, most people don't have the Int Gohan on there, although I think, did Truth have them at 10? I can't remember. So, half of the list is like just not there for global right so a global top 10 list i think will look very very different so this is my top 10 lrs it includes all lrs so it's dokon fest and yellow coin um this was kind of tricky to do because again like only ranking the ones on global the list looks very very different um and as i say in all of my tier lists you know this is just my opinion this is based off of my experiences with playing with the units myself in the game um, you know, there are certain ones, I would say for the entire list, any units that are next to each other, whether it say 4 and 5 or 5 and 6, like any units that are next to each other, I probably wouldn't have a huge argument if you wanted to switch them, right? Um, maybe even like some of them I could see arguments for moving them up or down even multiple places. But this is the list that I put together. I showed it to a couple of people just to get their opinions and I made some tweaks based on some stuff that I'd kind of forgotten that they brought up. So it's something that I'm not exactly 100% like this is the definitive top 10 list and no one must disagree with me. So let me know what you guys think down below. As I always say on these tier list things, I'm perfectly happy for people to disagree. Let me know the reasons why you think think units should be in different places. I think I see people say this on Twitter all the time, but nothing is more frustrating than when you post a tier list or like a take and then people just reply and they just say no, or they just say like, you're wrong, but they don't explain why. Like if you don't think any of these placements are correct, let me know why in the comment section and obviously be civil about it and I'm happy to, you know, reply to the comments, discuss the placements with people and uh, let me know what your top 10 list would look like down below if you can't include any of the units that are not out on JP. So, we're going to jump in straight away with number 10, which for me is the STR Carnival Goku. Now, I think this unit is really good. Um, I could see arguments for him being higher on like his, you know, best case scenario. But the biggest problem with this unit, I think a lot of people, the reason why they don't like him, is because it feels like with most of the, his kit that he's supposed to be a floating support unit. But to get him fully built up, um, stats wise it's 5 hits and then 10 hits if you want to get his active skill and the scouter. Which is obviously a very very valuable ability. So a lot of people don't like the idea of floating off a unit that needs to get hit 10 times. Especially because with, unless you get good RNG, in most events you're getting fewer attacks towards the end of the turn. So if you take the risk and put him in slot one or two early on in an event where there are like four or five attacks in one slot, then he runs the risk of getting super attacked straight away and then he does actually take quite a lot of damage. But once you get him fully built up, like I still get impressed by the numbers that this guy puts out and mine has one dupe. So at rainbow, like he is very good. I know Truth always jokes about it in his videos, and it happens to me a lot too, where you try and hide this unit where he can get a couple of attacks, but isn't necessarily going to eat a super, and then RNG doesn't go your way and he does eat a super. But as long as he's not, if you can get him built up, like he's tanking everything for double digits, he's supporting the rotation, um, you know, raising defense on super, he's obviously much tankier after he's actually attacked. Like, I think he is very, very good. I am desperately awaiting him to finally return. We need another solo carnival banner so that he can actually return so that I can pick up those extra copies. But for me, for now, as it stands, he is number 10. Like I said at the beginning, I could easily see him moving up a place or so. But he's number 10 for now. 
Uh, number nine, we have the LR God Goku. So before Bulma released, I would probably argue that this guy was like the best yellow coin LR on Global. Uh, obviously, his Easy A still not out on JP. Um, I wonder if that is the main reason why he doesn't appear in any top 10 LR lists. Although I guess the guys on JP, they probably, especially people like Truth, probably do factor in this guy's Easy A even though it's not out on JP. But because there's those other units that, you know, from the anniversary and stuff, this guy probably wouldn't make it into the top 10 if those guys were included. Because obviously, as you can see right here, he's here at number 9. But this guy is very, very good. He can be reliant on dodge when you get to like the hardest phases of some of the bosses, especially when it comes to super attacks. But once you've got him built up, and remember he can uh, build up his attack for like a few turns, or attack and defense. Like once he's fully built up, he can actually tank normal attacks even if he doesn't dodge. So he can still be good defensively. Um, and you know, his offense can get up to a pretty high numbers. Uh, he's just overall a very, very solid unit. As a global player, I was definitely very happy with his Easy A. Like, every now and then we get these little global Ws, and him getting his Easy A on global first, and actually being really good, um, I think was very, very good. He is still a very solid unit. Now, obviously, nowadays, he's dropped down in the rankings of overall units, because we now have the Dokkan Fest exclusive God Goku, who, despite not being an LR, I just, like, hands down, I would say, is better than this guy. Um, but, you know, you could run them both on the same team. It's just that God Goku kind of occupies the slot this God Goku would have taken up, right? Um, you can run him in slot one, you can link him up with the LR gods, but you can't use them together. So his value kind of decreased with the release of the Dokkan Fest exclusive Goku. But since this is an LR list and not a TUR list, uh, he comes in at the number nine spot for me. So then we move on to number eight and we have the LR gods. So I feel like people have like started underestimating the eight year LRs. I mean, I say that you will have noticed the absence of the LR Super Saiyan 4s. I would probably have them at 11 on this list because I, you know, units don't just exist in a vacuum, right? The seven year LRs are very similar, obviously. Sorry, the six year LRs are very similar, obviously. No, these are the seven. I'm getting confused again. Seven and eight. <laughs> we need that anniversary on Global so I can stop getting confused. The seven year LRs have very similar kits, right? And in a vacuum, I kind of like the Super Saiyan 4s a bit more, right? I like Gogeta, especially with the update that's not yet on Global, where you can counter Supers even in events where you can't dodge. That does give him an edge over Broly because the gods you lose their ability to dodge. But, like, units don't exist in a vacuum. And the LR Super Saiyan 4s, they just repeatedly didn't give them help while repeatedly buffing the LR Gods team. So as the game stands at the moment with other units that are available and the teams that are available, like the Gods are just so much better than the LR Super Saiyan 4s. Um, so these guys, I still think they are very good. Uh, I see people, I, I never agree with this thing that people say that if you run these guys now, you're only running them for their leader skill and you just run them as like a floating unit off rotation. Because units like the LR God Goku EZA and the release of the Dokkan Fest God Goku have made it so that these guys have more value now because they link so well with those characters. And the main reason why I put them above Int LR God Goku, because I could see, I could see arguments for in LR God Goku being better than them. But as I was saying when I talked about him, because of the physical God Goku kind of replacing him, the physical God Goku and then these guys rotation on a team is still very, very strong as well. Now, obviously, these guys are vulnerable after the first turn when they lose their guard. You do want to be getting as many supers in with them as possible that, so they can stack up their defense. But then you can, if you want to, you don't want to, like, absolutely min-max the blue form. You can transform with them basically immediately on turn four, transform into the blue uh, Vegeta and Goku. And then, as long as you're picking up a decent amount of rainbow orbs, they have a very high chance to dodge. They action break on their 18 key super. Like, there are a lot of instances where if you're running, say, physical God Goku and then these guys, God Goku is handling slot one, and then these guys, I've been in many occasions in difficult events, even like Metal Cooler Core, where there's actually only one attack in slot two, and then these guys get their 18 key super off, cancel out that attack completely, and then even if they do have to take hits, obviously if they don't dodge a super from the hardest hitting bosses, they're going to die, right? But 
if you get their double super off, because they massively raise defense on their 18 key and then greatly raise on their 12 key, they will tank normal attacks for double digits. Like when the Cell Max event first came out and people were struggling to even beat it for the first time, if these guys get their double super off on a rotation where they have like good links active, they will tank his normal attacks for double digits. It's only the super attack that takes them out, right? So I still think they are very good. I mean, they're not exactly super high on the list here, right? They are at number eight. So I'm not suggesting they're still one of the best units in the game or anything, but I still think they are very, very good. So moving on to number seven, we have the AGL LR Gohan. I can see people making arguments that he's better than some of the people above. I don't see many people arguing that the units we've listed below him are better. So I think this is a good spot for him. I've seen people ranking him as high as like being in the top three, like for Global, especially when he first came out. Um, the biggest problem I think with him is a lot of the teams that you run him on, like Goku Family, Hybrids, Kamehameha, Movie Heroes, um, some of those teams outside of running Piccolo units, they don't have a huge amount of healing options available. And one thing that I notice in these very difficult events is Gohan holds his own perfectly fine. But as soon as somebody else, especially if it's on the opposite rotation, gets blasted by a super attack, his restriction of needing 58% uh, HP to guard, once you lose that, even when he's stacked up a decent amount of defense, like he can take a lot of damage from some of these big bosses once his guard runs out. Now, obviously, in his best case scenario, uh, where you're stacking, you always have guard, he looks really, really good. And if you can transform him into Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, he's dropping some ridiculous attack stats. I think the first showcase I did for him when he got his EZA, we got up to like a 40 million attack or something ridiculous, right? He's actually crazy. But the downside that I don't see a lot of people talking about is if you put him in slot 1, he can absolutely get destroyed. Um, depending on how high you stacked your defense, obviously. But once you've transformed, he doesn't have guard anymore. So if he gets blasted in slot one, he can die. And then he drops his attacks, in which he does a lot of damage. But again, he's lost his guard. If the enemy doesn't get killed by his, like, Megaton nuke, then supers him, then he dies. So he is still really, really good. But I feel like there are a lot of instances where he can get caught that people just don't consider when talking about how good he is. So I think 7 is a pretty good place for him overall on Global. Like I said, I can see people making some arguments for him being above some of the units that we have rated above him, but I think he's very, very good. Especially this next one. I can see people getting mad about the, these two potentially being needed to switch, but at number... I've already lost where I am now. 10, 9, 8, 7. Yeah, number 6, we have the Tech Carnival Goku. Now, this guy, when he released, by many people was considered the best unit in the game. Um, obviously, there was always the argument between him and Cooler as to who was better. Um, this guy is still very, very good. Uh, a lot of people have seen him kind of have a bit of a renaissance with the release of the Tech World Tournament Goku because you need a unit to revive on that team in order to make Tech Goku reach his full potential. And this guy can obviously get his revival a lot earlier than the Tech World Tournament Goku. The one thing I've started to notice a lot recently though, and this is kind of a complaint I have about the Tech World Tournament Goku team or the unit in general, because we don't have the 8th anniversary LRs, is I often get into situations where even if you do take a decent amount of damage, you're getting this guy on rotation when you haven't gotten to 59% or below HP, which means he doesn't have his revival available. And then if the first attack of the turn he takes, because remember he needs to get hit once to get a little defense bump, if he the first attack of the turn he takes is a super he can take quite a lot of damage still um you know you take him into events like uh, the metal cooler core uh, the non red zone cell max and yeah if he's taking a super as the first attack of the turn he can still take a lot of damage because he does infinitely raise defense on his 18 key but in some of those events where you're getting to the final phase and the boss can hit you incredibly hard you get to those phases fairly quickly and so he hasn't stacked up a ton of defense um so i've had instances where i just can't get him to guard obviously his strength is that oh sorry he can't get him to revive his strength is that he has guard 
unless you've got his uh, revive restriction up and then he can get blasted but it doesn't matter because you revive and after that he has guaranteed guard so he still has a lot of value i still run him a lot right there's a lot of teams that i build where he's one of the first picks for the team but i definitely think he has fallen a little bit in the overall rankings in terms of who is the best of the best so now as we move into the top five, I kind of already mentioned, I've mentioned it in previous lists, I've always had these two units this way around. I have STR Cooler next. For me personally, as a big fan of offense, a big fan of extreme teams in general, like I've always had Cooler above the Tech Goku, even though I could see arguments for them being switched. Now this was the placement that I found the most difficult because Cooler at the moment is pretty much holding it down for the extreme side, right? He's like the best extreme unit in the game. Uh, he can still do absolute crazy numbers. I retweeted Goresh's tweet uh, from yesterday, I believe, of him doing the burst mode legendary Goku event. And in that clip, it's Cooler going absolute ham, dropping the supernova for a ridiculous amount of damage, and then doing like 20 mil on his 18 key, and then two additional like 12 million attacks that like 12 keys. So he really can be him when you get the good RNG, you get him in a good scenario. Obviously, it helps that his best link partner is a unit that gives him a ton of support, but I still think this unit is absolutely fantastic. Um, very, very strong. Like I say, still probably the best extreme unit on Global, or at least the LR, because I guess Piccolo Jr. is kind of up there now in contention. He's definitely the best extreme TUR. Um, and, you know, you can run them together and they share a couple of links. So STR Cooler, I still think, is very good. Still very high up on the list. It was difficult to place him for me because I still think when weighing up the options that he is better than this guy. But when everything's going your way, I can see people making arguments for this guy being better than Cooler. So having them two places apart, I think, is something that a lot of people probably won't agree with. But maybe a little bit of his personal bias. I don't know. I just love this unit. I think he is really, really good. Um, but like I say, if you want to drop him down even below AGL Gohan, I could see the arguments for it, right? Um, so top four, number four, we have uh, Beast Gohan. <laughs> and yeah, not really Beast Gohan, but he is, right? I know people that people still get really sensitive about the whole it's only an active skill. Um, a take that I kind of agree with that I know a lot of people won't like is that the Beast Gohan thing, because he's in the movie for such a short amount of time and he does so little, he kind of is the perfect choice for an active skill. And, like, people are mad because they wanted a playable Beast Gohan. But, like, imagine a playable LR Beast Gohan. What would his animations be? He needs two super attacks and potentially an active skill. Like, what three animations do you even get for Beast Gohan? But anyway, that's a completely separate topic. If you're disappointed he wasn't playable, it is understandable. It would have been hype if he was. But a lot of people use that to colour their, um, like, overall opinions of this unit. But this unit is good. I was saying since he came out that he was good but wonky, and he still kind of is, but he's seen a lot of recent releases that are buffing him tremendously. Um, and like, you know, if you ever see like the screenshots or the clips of him at his peak, he's crazy. Like he is super, super good when you get him going, right? The biggest flaw of his kit is not getting a guaranteed additional at 20 key, or that he needs supers to build up. If they fixed one of those two, then he would be fine, right? Because once you get him built up, especially if you are getting the additional off of that 20 key, um, and you even get, like, the hidden potential, right? A lot of people's opinions of him have gone up because now that he's finally returned on a banner, people are starting to get dupes in him. Um, you know, you get those runs where he triple supers on turn one or two, and then still gets, like, the double super on the other one, um, and he's already basically fully built up, um, he's looking very, very good, right? Just like Piccolo, he has guard, as long as you don't float him off, for his first two appearances, which helps to back up his defense. He can nullify Key Blast super attacks, which is both the last phases of Broly, which is very, very strong ability. Um, he's just really good, and it's kind of a shame that a lot of people downplay him. I think a lot of people overplay him, and that's why this unit probably has the most toxic, like, discourse in the whole of the fan base, because the people who love him overrate him a little bit and the people that hate him underrate him so he is a unit that i feel like not many people actually rate correctly um and on his on his original release i put cooler over him but they are very similar units 
And now that he's gotten a lot of help and the teams have gotten a lot better, it's just like what I said about the 7th anniversary LRs, units don't exist in a vacuum. And now that this guy has gotten a lot of extra help, I think he is much, much better than he was on release, right? So he is at number four. Number three, we have LR, Vegeta, and Trunks. Not a huge amount, I guess, I really need to say about them. They've dominated these kind of leader, um, like, tier lists ever since they released. When they released, they were the best unit in the game. I still think they are very good. I'm seeing a lot of people souring on them, and I think the main reason people don't like them is because they are a unit that is designed to pretty much only be run in slot one. Now, obviously, you can run them not in slot one, while their guard is still active from their in intro buff, which is five turns. But once that's run out, you basically have to have them in slot one for them to perform the best. And some people don't like that because they don't want a unit that has to be run in a specific slot. Even though some of those same people will go crazy over units that have to be run in slot two because if you put them in slot one, they die. So I don't really understand that criticism sometimes from certain people. Um, but I still think this unit is really good. Uh, obviously still leads a crazy good team. I guess once we get a new bond of parent and child lead that has a better extra 30%, these guys will probably be replaced a little bit. But on certain teams, they are still a great option to run. And when we do finally get a big Future Saga theme celebration, because we need new, like, Goku Blacks, new Zamasus, we really need a new Vegito Blue. Like, if that team becomes a crazy strong team, these guys will have a place on that team even if they don't end up being, like, the best unit. They're one of those units, I think, they would benefit from you only running one of them, because even though you will be running them in slot one, it means both of your rotations aren't locked to being these guys in slot one, which I think is a lot of people's big complaint about them. But they are still very good, still able to tank against the toughest bosses. Uh, very, very strong unit. And then we get to the top two, and this is the one where I know people will argue, people will want to switch them around, and like I say, I'm perfectly okay with that. But number two, we have Piccolo. So Piccolo, in my opinion, finally has been dethroned as the number one unit. And there's a very specific reason. I think we just talk about both of them at the same time, because number one is obviously the new LR Bulma. Now, the reason for this, if we go back to talking about Piccolo, the reason why Piccolo, I think, was one of the best units in the game is because of just all of the stuff that he does, right? He has the guard for the three turns. Um, he gets extra key from the orbs, he does builds up by getting hit, so he's a really, really good slot 1 unit. There's a lot of events where he can get fully built up on turn 1, and then he's dropping like, you know, 15, 18 million attack stats on turn 1. So, pretty crazy. Uh, him getting hit gives everyone else on the rotation 2 extra key, which is a massive ability that I feel people don't talk about enough. Um, and he was number one even without this. Like, I very rarely ever get this go off where you're at 30% less HP and he gives you a full heal and then gets extra damage reduction. When that goes off, I mean, you probably could just argue he is number one, but that doesn't happen that often. But even without that, he was argued at number one and is now, like, at number two for me. Very, very strong unit. Very good. His orange transformation... Um, just completely screws bosses out of being able to super attack you or do AoEs, if that's one of their abilities. Obviously, that has the most impact when we get the 8th anniversary Sin Shenron fight. But this guy's just absolutely crazy. The reason why Bulma is at number one, Bulma has guard for seven turns. Um, she changes orbs. Once you pick up the orbs, this is the big difference between her and Piccolo, is she's not only providing direct support to everybody on the rotation, but then she's supporting the next rotation as well. I dropped a video yesterday showing how these two can work together with this guy linked up with STR Piccolo and then her on the other rotation. Getting her orbs then gives Piccolo support on his next turn and then he's dropping like 20 mil attack stats. Like he's actually crazy when paired with her. She just makes every other unit that you run her with better. Her active skill turn is crazy. Even at 55%, I think in the showcase, she dropped like a 12 million attack stat or something when you use her active skill. Her active skill makes all allies on the turn super effective against all types, enabling them to do some insane damage. And then um, you also have the fact that the orb changing, you get a bit of extra healing, which is nice. And then what's really crazy, I've seen people running her off leader skill and she's still really good right because she guards she's getting a lot of defense from her super attacks and then at each turn she appears she gets an extra seven percent damage reduction so by the time her guard runs out she still already has was it like 35 percent damage reduction 
Uh, she's ridiculously good, right? She is just, like I say, the, she's arguably the best unit in the game, let alone the best, T, uh, the best LR on Global. So I have her at number one. I have Piccolo at number two. I, I can still see arguments for him being number one, but like the two of them together are just crazy. And the fact that they are on Warriors Raised on Earth, they are on Power of Wishes, so when Global does get the anniversary and we get both the anniversary LRs, you can run both of these guys on their teams and they are just absolutely insane. So that is the overall 10. This is the list in its entirety. There you go, 1 to 10. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. I know there's definitely going to be some controversial placings here for some people. And as I said at the beginning, if you don't agree with me, that's perfectly fine. Just let me know the reasons why you disagree. And let me know how you would reorder some of these units if you would. So there you go. That is the top 10 LRs on Global as of the Part 2 Golden Week drop with LR Bulma. Crazy to see her coming in at number one on the list. So let me know what you guys think down below. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Master Ningen. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.